So for the current state of zombies, the way I choose my next video is what I enjoy. And I've always had fond memories of playing Dead Ops Arcade, though I never played that much. So I thought I'd go back and beat Dead Ops Arcade on Black Ops 1, Black Ops 3, and Cold War, which definitely isn't easy. In doing so though, I had more fun playing Dead Ops Arcade than I have playing any other zombies in a very long time. And I think this mode actually stands as one of the most underrated modes in all of Call of Duty. The first Dead Ops Arcade was presented to us in Black Ops 1. And if you've ever played Black Ops 1 before, you will not have forgotten that you can actually get out of the chair. But this is how I like to think about it. So you want to play some zombies, you go down to zombies, and then all of a sudden the TVs change, the coloration changes, the guy in the window goes away, and he returns as a zombie. And he's trying to get into the room, so you start freaking out a little bit, and you go back to the main menu. You look down, you see that you're chained, you spam a bunch of buttons, and it will finally let you out. In, on PC, I just spam the space button. And then you can actually maneuver around this room. And if you go to this certain computer here, and type in DOA, you enter the arcade mode. Which, if you learn that, you most likely have never forgotten it because it's just such a cool Easter egg. And I think this is why Dead Ops Arcade is so underrated. First of all, it's not in first person, but the main reason, people think there's nothing to it. You just hop in and it's this cool little mode, when really there's a lot to this mode. The story behind this mode is actually really cool. So, us as the main soldier character travel to an island to seek out treasure. We bring our chicken companion, which is probably the weirdest part about this entire story. The relationship between the soldier and the chicken is just weird. But anyway, when trying to seek out the treasure, we have to get through hordes of zombies and then finally the cosmic silverback, who was originally just a normal gorilla until he was sent into space by Russians in 1962. When his rocket then returned to Earth, he was a zombified version of himself. And theories are that he landed on element 115, thus infecting him and mutating him. It is said that the gorilla did actually come from Ascension as well, which is really cool. So of course, our mission is quite clear, defeat the zombies, defeat the silverback, and retrieve our wanted treasure. In the original Dead Ops arcade, you only have to traverse 40 rounds to get to the cosmic silverback, and the first 20 to 30 rounds are actually quite easy. And the actual mode itself actually mirrors a certain story. If you take the landed rocket as a mountain and the gorilla as a dragon, the crawlers as spiders, the hellhounds as the wargs or wolves, and the big guys, I don't even know their name, as trolls, it almost seems to mirror the journey of Bilbo Baggins in The Hobbit. Except we are not reclaiming our treasure. I guess we're just as greedy as the Cosmic Silverback. My favorite part of Dead Ops Arcade though is the Room of Fate, where you get to choose a fate at random. Fortunately here, I got the Fate of Firepower, which gives me a permanent death machine, which in my opinion on Black Ops 1 is definitely the best. Although you can get Furious Feast, which make you move a lot faster, the Fortune one, which doubles the length of your power-ups, and of course the Friendship one, which gives you your chicken companion all the time. As you can probably tell, I love Dead Ops Arcade. And possibly another reason why it's so underrated is because it's a lot more fun to play than to actually watch. And I definitely found that out when trying to make this video. Still though, that doesn't take away how much fun this mode is. And I'm going to be completely honest, it only gets better from here. This is Dead Ops Arcade and Treyarch did a wonderful job innovating the mode and making it even better. But first, before we move on, we have to take out the Cosmic Silverback. So after beating round 40, we then get onto the boss round. And I think it's really important to take this in with context. Imagine 12 years ago when Black Ops 1 released, learning that if you type in DOA on the computer, you enter this arcade mode. Then you are good enough to survive to round 40, which definitely isn't easy. It took me about two days of playing quite a lot to actually beat this. When you take in the fact that it only takes an hour to actually beat the boss, I played a lot of games then. There weren't many YouTube videos back then of great quality on the subject. And by the time you actually come to the boss, and if you do beat him, you feel a great sense of completion. Because after all, you play for an hour through a lot of crazy situations. So I would have loved to have experienced that myself. I happened to do it 12 years later with a lot of help from a lot of awesome YouTubers. Because the skill ceiling on Dead Ops Arcade is actually insane. Like, the people who are very good at Dead Ops Arcade are incredible at it. And then if you're a new player, you're not going to get too far, especially in these later games. But anyway, I did beat the Cosmic Silverback and he's probably the easiest boss out of the three DOAs because your nukes actually do quite a lot of damage to him. And I had a few nukes on me still. And now we can finally obtain our treasure. Once we stand on the teleporter, it then says victory, the cosmic silverback defeated. Or was he? 
ellipsis. So the silverback's dead and all the gems come out. And then he comes back and hits us back on the island from which we then start round 41. So you can actually go as high as you want until, of course, you crash or die. So that's also really cool. But it doesn't make much sense why the cosmic silverback slammed us back to the island when we already killed him. Because in Dead Ops Arcade 2, it starts with his funeral. From which some of the zombies and a hellhound is there. But most importantly, his brother, the cyber silverback, who is, I believe, a cyborg. I could be wrong, though. There really isn't that much information on the story. But he does get super upset by his brother's death. And he starts working out, getting ready to avenge him. Which, of course, relates to us because we killed him. As we're soaking up the sun with our chicken companion, he comes along and steals our chicken. And now, instead of the hunt for treasure, we're on the hunt for our chicken companion. Like I said, the human and the chicken have a really weird relationship with this. Though, if a cyborg gorilla stole my dog, I would do the same. One of the reasons Dead Ops Arcade is great is because, unlike its first person counterparts, like for example, Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4, there was no change to the core mechanics of the game. Only an enhance in graphics and increase in rounds, leading to more playability. And then finally, the addition of some new power ups, such as the first person mode, which I guess technically changes the core mechanics of the game, but only when you're in first person and it's done very well and quite necessary because it is hard, Dead Ops Arcade 2. Every time we teleport, we get to see the map and the stage of the journey we are to get to the Cyber Silverback, which I thought was a really cool addition. It's also important to note that we need to do four rounds at every single destination on this map. Every so often, you'll get a Silverback challenge. And this is more for co-op, but you can do it solo as well. And if I get four laps in 70 seconds, I will get a reward. And I'm still kind of puzzled about the reward, but I'm pretty sure you basically just get one of the fates in the Room of Judgment just for one round after this. Though, as you'll see later, I beat another Silverback challenge and I get a really crazy reward. I did, however, fail this challenge and I was very close. I usually beat it, but I just had a bad drive this time. Really fun, especially fun with friends. And I guess that kind of sums up Dead Ops Arcade as well. It's really fun solo, but if you're playing with friends, it's on another level. Just like on Dead Ops Arcade, there are vehicles and they are really helpful. And I love how you can simply just run over the zombies. They also updated the look of gems on the game. In Dead Ops Arcade, they were really small. In the Black Ops 3 version, they're really nice looking. At the end of round 19, you then enter another silverback challenge. But as it says there, your fate depends on getting to the top. So if you get to the top, you get your fate. So I first of all went straight down there, this little easter egg. And that's what comes with Dead Ops Arcade. There are tons of easter eggs. Unfortunately, I suck and a skeleton just one hit me. I do just want to take the time to shout out a YouTuber who's absolutely awesome. I had a lot of fun watching all of his videos and learning how to play Dead Ops Arcade. And you guys should definitely check him out if this has inspired you to play the game again. And that's The Moz Project. I think that's how you pronounce it. But I'll leave his link in the description because he really helped me complete all three of these just by watching his YouTube videos. And he's genuinely just absolutely insane at the game. He's beat all the three versions flawless. I'm going to spoil something. I went down 63 times in this game. Of course, you get lives just like there. I picked up one. And also through the gathering of time and points through gems and such. But finally, after arriving to the top, I can then drop down and this silverback challenge is completed. And now I'm in the room of fate. Now, luckily in Dead Ops Arcade 2, there's actually a way to tell the difference fates apart from each other and that's by the shape of the rocks and just like in the original i wanted the power of destruction essentially the damage fate because again i think it's the best in dead ops arcade 3 things do change a lot with the fates and things get a lot harder like i've already said when spawning into this area you can actually see a shadow on the ground and always a first person mode will spawn if you look up this dry waterfall you can actually speed boost up it and get the nukes and also sometimes a rat which spawned for me that was another really good thing that black ops did it used things from within their game but the chicken definitely wasn't from their game you can actually get the chicken mech which you can see in the sky here which is awesome in this game i did not get it through doing a power boost off the waterfall and then into the chicken instead i had to beat the game and then you get rewarded with the chicken mech there's also a power up which gives you the black hole of an apothecary servant which is really cool and a bunch of gems and skulls come out in black ops 3 these skulls and gems have insane multipliers which makes things a lot more fun and a lot more satisfying when you do collect these items. They also added from the main game into Dead Ops Arcade, the meatballs, marguas, and also multiplayer maps. You get to play on evac, combine, and metro, which personally I thought was really cool. About halfway through the game, you get put into the test of ennoblement. Now, luckily I got some tips on this because it is quite difficult. And just as the round starting, I dropped a nuke, which removed all of the round white balls surrounding it. And only two ended up spawning back in. So usually there's white balls surrounding the thing the whole time. And this is really hard. And so 
all I really got to do is shoot the stone guardian until it's destroyed. And once defeated, I then get put in the room of judgment. And as you can see, I get the upgraded death machine. And if I didn't get this, I probably would have taken a couple more days to beat Dead Ops Arcade 2. But I got really lucky. And this death machine is actually called the Night Fury death machine. And you can see this is probably my best movement I did in all the three games. If you're like me and you like to clutch up, but you feel limited on normal zombies in first person, Dead Ops Arcade is great because it's kind of just freestyling your way through the zombies and it's a lot of fun. But finally, I did get to the boss battle, which is Cyber's Avenging. And immediately I get taken down and I was like, oh crap, maybe this is not going to be easy. I have only two lives left. Now, I haven't mentioned this, but every time you go down, you do have about 10 seconds before you can get damaged again. So I always abuse that. But then I pick up a wrap and I can just drive back and forth into him. The wrap is probably the most fun I had with a vehicle in all of Dead Ops. I then ran into a first person mode as soon as the wrap ended, which is absolutely perfect time. And then get a Mark or Harp, which kills every zombie in close proximity. And so now looking back, I think I got really, really lucky this game. I got the Night Fury death machine, which is incredibly overpowered. And yet I still am doing very little damage to him. I got the wrap. I got the first person, which definitely makes things easier. And I still had a bunch of nukes and I finally take him down. The Cyber Silverback is defeated, but he has many brothers, dot, dot, dot. That is terrifying. Though I don't think they realized they were going to use his mum in the end. But anyway, now we can collect our chicken, collect our treasure. An egg also hatches as a reward on the map, which is the massive chicken mech. So after eliminating the Cyber Silverback, I believe it's his brother who comes because he doesn't have a cyborg guy, so it's not himself like in the first version. But anyway, we get hit back to the very start. And then again, we can continue from from there to whatever round we want but things get increasingly long and a lot harder we do however get to use our benefit of the chicken <laughs> which is incredibly overpowered we shoot explosive eggs out and again i mean just more fun to have moving on to dead ops arcade 3 we have the rise of the mama back and it starts with the cyber silverback calling his mum after being injured and having a pretend chicken toy which is kind of funny calls his mother up and then his mother becomes enraged she then opens the drawer and gets the wooden spoon out we all know how that feels and then she herself starts training just like her son once did whilst the chicken is putting sunscreen on us the mama back comes out of nowhere boinks us on the head and then steals our chicken and so of course same situation as last time we get angry and our goal is to get our chicken companion back so one of the biggest differences in dead ops arcade 3 is that you can actually change your camera from camera high to camera extra high to center to camera low. And you can actually see I'm playing as Rambo. You can actually play as your characters in this game. And there are keys and the keys are very important, but more on that later. I've also actually beaten this before, but in first person. Now, if you didn't know, this was the rarest trophy in Cold War. So out of all the achievements you could get, beating Dead Ops Arcade was achieved the least. And so they added first person mode, which made it a lot easier. And I beat it like first game of it. And they also added advanced start. So if you went down around 64 you can start around 64 in this game i just played the normal version which is way way harder i failed probably upwards of 10 times and the main reason why dead ops rk3 is way harder than the other ones is because of the zombies anticipation logic so they will actually anticipate where you move as you can see right here they're guessing where i'm going before i'm even there it's also way harder because it just starts harder and that's because of the wild the biggest thing introduced to dead ops rk3 and i personally love the wild because it adds so much more content and adds a a lot more variety in gameplay but first you have to complete round four and then the mama back will spawn in take all of your treasure throw a bomb on the portal so then we can't go to the next location and we have to actually go into the wild there are so many things you can do in the wild luckily i have for example an arcade machine that she spawned in at the spawn of the wild so i can actually hop into the arcade machine and get extra lives and gems and hopefully keys in the wild you can collect keys which you can use as extra lives if you run out or you use to unlock doors and actually make your way to the room of fate by round five there are also dungeons you can explore which give you keys and you can potentially get another fate if a magua spawns in there but that did not happen for my sake it also just helps because you can get a lot more gems and things which leads to more lives there are also these crazy bonus areas on the way and sometimes the six armed boss from black ops 4 zombies are protecting them and in these bonus rooms you can get a lot of speed boosts and in the sake of the kaboom room you get a bunch of nukes so now that i've done this it makes sense why cold war is so hard because of the element of the wild. There are even the elephants from No 
time. And so we have to get into a vehicle and drive away. And finally, using two keys, I can then get to the bottom of the volcano. So normally I'd only be able to do this at round 20. And so the first 20 rounds would be really hard. But now I can actually go up the volcano really early. But before doing so, halfway up, I actually travel across this bridge and I can pay tribute by using one key to reveal the true fates. So this is obviously very helpful. But first I actually had to eliminate Werewolf from Dead of the Night, which if you've just seen, I beat every Black Ops 4 map. So I found this really cool. Finally, I can drop down and I'm looking for a rock with blue crystals that's very small and kind of in the center of the stone. The red colored one is, is the Fate of Fury, which we used in Dead of Arcade 1 and 2. Although it's very good in this game, the Furious feet are even better, which just makes you run really, really fast. This also means you have to be really good at training. And I think this is why I like Dead Ops Arcade 3 the most, is because it is so difficult. And Furious Feet being the best face just leads to the most fun, in my opinion. Although I haven't played enough of all of them to really decide which one's my favorite. Leave in the comments which one you guys think's the best, because I'm very curious. I think they're all very, very solid. And after making this video, I might go back and try and beat Dead Ops Arcade 1 and 2 with the Furious Feet just for some fun. In this lake area here, if you get the first person mode, you can actually see these golden sculptures of what looks like either Dempsey, Richtofen, or even maybe Nikolai when he was younger. So I thought that was a really nice addition, seeing that this is essentially zombies, just at a different perspective. This is the first arena where you don't move with the same consistency, because you start to actually slide on the ice. So this is a really hard spot, and on top of that, you also have to kill a Blightfather, one of the bosses from 9. I got very lucky in this circumstance, and I got a spawn of skeletons, which are on my team, and help distract the zombies and the Blightfather from trying to kill me. Also, I think my favorite power-up might be the boxing gloves. When moving on to the very last area, you have to actually go through the wild again. But it's a different section of the world that you can't enter unless you get to round 60. And it's full of traps, zombies, crawlers, dragon heads, the six-armed boss guy. And we're just trying to get into the cave. So my plan was I went out of first-person mode and then went back in. And you can't be damaged for 10 seconds after entering first-person mode. So I abused that and took out three of the skeleton camps. And then the rest of the skeletons. And now all I have to do is eliminate the king a skeleton who's actually quite easy to take out to be honest he just has a lot of health and i can now exit the wild and get into the boss fight before doing that i have to actually eliminate a magua cold war is full of bosses all the time and they're even stronger like this magua catches me instead of slamming he just hits me in dead ops arcade 2 at least i had like a second to react while he's slamming but finally we're on to the mama back but when entering the boss fight with the mama back i have possibly the worst start i literally run over a trap that i just didn't see so great start seeing that this mama back is really harder and I've actually failed the boss fight multiple times. But luck was on my side and I ended up getting a helicopter drop which lasts a while and does a, quite a lot of damage. If you realize that the mama back has an incredible amount of health. A golden egg does spawn into the map and so I use my nuke because whenever you get a golden egg, if you can let it hatch before the zombies break it, you will get another life. So luckily I got that as you can see it's just so sweet. The mama back shoots monkey bombs at me which slow me down so I have to use another the nuke and then fortunately I get the boxing gloves which are really good because I can actually block the mama back's attacks by using it. Here I was a bit of an idiot though I used the nuke and then thought it last longer than it did and got slammed as soon as it ended and whenever I do have the invincibility I abuse it because she's got a lot of health. I did have to do a dash here to get myself out of these traps and between the zombies but at this point I felt like I was at my peak of my dead ops arcade skill like black ops 1 I was kind of bad black ops 3 I was getting better but cold war it took me like four days to beat this and I played so much because I was loving it so much and I think it really made me appreciate how good this mode is. Like I want to beat it again. It was that much fun and I want to do it in co-op. I want to do it in solo and try and go flawless even though that is ridiculous to do though people have done it. I think for me to get flawless on Dead Ops Arcade 3 it would take me three months at a minimum but luckily in this situation I did have a lot of downs left when I got into the boss fight so even though I took quite a few downs and used all of my nukes and dashes I was able to defeat the mama back and collect all of the treasure, which is very satisfying. And we did save Fidelina, the chicken, and we've won the day. We grab Mama Back's bag and we drink a potion, which actually turns us into a chicken. Ah, uh, yeah, the story is very bizarre. So I guess now we... Ah... Uh. Never mind. But we get shot in the back by another gorilla who comes out of absolutely nowhere with a ray gun who transports us back to being a human. I've got no idea what's happening. He hits us back to the start and the chicken mourns for us. 
So I guess this can only mean that we will be seeing a Dead Ops 4 in the future, potentially. And maybe in Dead Ops Arcade 4, the gorilla will have a ray gun and can actually shoot or something. But who knows when that would release, and it could definitely be never. I think it's really important just to appreciate this mode for what it is, though. I know last year that Treyarch said that Outbreak was really popular, but to me, that doesn't even get close to how good Dead Ops Arcade is. And after beating all of the games, I still hold it as the most underrated mode in Call of Duty history. And so I hope if you've never played it before, you give it a shot, or maybe you were like me and you only played a little bit of it, and now you can see its full potential.